Raga Show, condición el villano y yo, Di Raga, ya. Yes sir, yes sir. The Shadow Villano Live, The Great FM WKMTDB, The Great FM Connecting the World Through Music. And hey, Bad Guy Show, me hand Diddy Shadow Villano and Di Raga. Yes. Yes sir, it's Sunday, How so are you, you know we are. I'm good, how about yourself? Good. We had a nice night last night. Oh yeah, it was dope. Last night uh performed at the uh, Slain Savages um, fashion, show. fashion show. It was a dope little fashion show. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we had a great time. Yeah, so he was DJ Boss. Yeah, DJ Boss, man, shout out to DJ Boss. He really helped me out with the show. Like he was, he you know, he integrated yeah, himself sure. with, my, with, with my stuff without knowing, without le having heard it ever. He, you know, it was dope. And he liked it. Yeah, he liked it. And uh, I think, I think uh, overall, you know, with the response of the, you know, of the, of the people there and everything, it was, I love it. I, I think that the, the cute ladies money. dancing around in the pool. That helped. That helped a lot, <laughs> that too. Helped. The energy was up all the time. Yes, the energy was up because we had, we had some strippers. But they weren't stripping, but they were dressed candidly, and uh, they were definitely uh you know, shaking that shit on the pole. It was, <laughs> yep, it was, it was fun. Or all was dope, but then we went out to La Cocina and Hialeah. Yeah, love was, me some Cocina and Hialeah. Yeah, that shit is so dope. Shout out to Maui, shout out to everybody out there in Cocina. Um, and uh, yeah, today, you know, uh, rainy ass day in Miami. Yes. But, you know, we got to. Well, we gotta get out there in that rain it's, it's, and, it's and get June. to our destinations and it's shit. It's already June, yeah, it's so already, you know that yeah. it's not gonna stop until yeah, it's November. Like, we're, we're in hurricane season now. And, uh, yeah, it's a stop. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just rain and, and, and fucking gray skies and sun every now and then. It's like Miami seems bipolar in hurricane season. But, um,. You know, uh, I, I, I was uh, happy that, you know, today finally came because I was, uh, I was really, like, anxious to, to meet you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I have, a, a, we have a great guest in today, uh, David Perez. David Perez. Perez, Perez. 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 <laughs> Perez. <laughs> 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 Perez. 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 Eh, David Perez, aquí está en la casa. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great, brother. How are you? Everything good, everything good. And, uh, you know, um, it's it's a pleasure to have you here because, you know, um, we we don't only, so, you know, our, our platform is not only for uh, music and artists, and, you know, we also offer our platform to businesses and charities. And, you know, I consider what you're doing, like, you know, such such, such an you know, awesome and, and positive thing, um, you know, getting to know about your life and your, you know, your struggles, you know, my, my hack, you know, is, is off to you because like you, you're, you're a real, real soldier um, in this life. And, um, you know, with your charity, you, 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 you have a very, a, a very dope niche uh, helping kids and also, you know, on the side of that, you know, you're helping people who are, you know, suffering of cancer. You yourself are, are, are going through a few things now. Yep. David, tell me, tell me a little bit about your life before we get into this, you know, all, all, all the nitty gritty. Tell me a little bit about you. Where are you from? Where were you born? Where did you go to school? When did you lose your virginity? No. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> David, the floor is yours, brother. Hi, brother. Well, um, first I want to start off by saying thanks for having me out here. Of course. It's, it's a pleasure, man. It really it's is. It's a pleasure. Um, it's such a small world. You know, Miami is what Miami is. You know, small world. Born and raised in Miami. Yeah. Uh, when I went to school, I went to Columbus for high school. Oh, nice. Class of 99. Um, adelante for all you guys out there. Um, I'm a firefighter. I actually work in Collier County, in Naples. Okay. North Naples. Or actually North Collier, now we changed the department. But, um, so I've been there for 16 years as a firefighter. Oh, wow. Back in uh, January 2020, I was diagnosed with uh, with cancer. Wow. Multiple myeloma. That's uh, skin cancer? No, 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 that's melanoma. Melanoma. Yeah, okay. it sounds a lot like it, but uh, myeloma, it affects uh, the blood. It's a blood cancer. Oh, wow. So it affects the bone marrow and... It's called multiple myeloma because it affects different parts of the body. So sorry to hear that, bro. You know, it is what it is. We all have our struggles. We all have our things. You yeah. Know? Um, so, yeah. So, you know, myeloma is, is a pretty rare 
an incurable blood cancer. Only 34,000 people get diagnosed with it a year, and mainly people between 60 and 80 years old. So it's mainly, um, it's a cancer of like the elderly people, mm. you know. Um, and how is it that it's affecting such a young, you know, active person like you? Well, funny you say that. So, so the fire service, you know, um, now that now we know the last couple of years, cancer in the fire service is growing rampant, man. Really, rampant, 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 rampant. Yeah, dude. What's the what's the cause? Well, the cause is is pretty much all the carcinogens we've been absorbing and taking in, and in fires. Mm. Um, but now we're finding out that our gear, really? our gear is actually lined with PFAS, like some of the chemicals that you know. Remember Scotchgard and 3M, you know, the uh -huh. stuff that we just spray yeah. everything. Well, that stuff is lining the inside of our gear, and um, you know, when we when we go fight fires and we sweat and stuff like that, our body, our pores, open they up. They open up and absorb that. Absorb the stuff. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's actually it's it's a combination between obviously the fires that we take in. I mean, we we sit on these fires sometimes, you know, for four to six hours. Yeah, I can imagine you're taking up uh, taking in all that smoke. Even yeah. if you're not breathing, you're taking it through your skin as yeah, well. Yeah, through your skin, or you know, yeah. we we only use the the SCBAs, those masks, and we go in fight the fire because it's too hot. Uh -huh. Then usually it, when the fire is out, we still have to do work, but we're still in the scene for a while. So we take that stuff off. Wow. You know, we're still inhaling some of the smoke, but right. now, thankfully, thanks to you know a lot of these hospitals, a lot of you know, let's say the firefighter cancer initiative, they're they're part of Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center. Right. And oh. now they're doing all these studies now that that are realizing that there's that the carcinogens that we are absorbing and taking in and inhaling, it's not just close to the fire scene. Like this stuff spreads out way beyond the area that we've been like sitting in and stewing in that for hours sense. at a time. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, so yeah, man, it's just a combination of stuff that we've been, that we're just, uh, you know, constantly um, surrounded by. I'm so sorry to hear that. Man. Yeah, yeah. And not to mention the lack of sleep as a firefighter, you know, people always, you know, they praise our, our career for our schedule, but you forget that those 24 hours, sometimes we're up all the time. Yeah. And then we, we so we also, let's say we sleep two, three hours a night. The next night we go home. Um, if we get a chance to sleep, some guys work overtime and stuff like that. They have little kids at home. Yeah. Whatever, yeah. whatever be it, we don't have a regular schedule that most people have. So our sleep schedule is completely thrown off. And all these things are factors that, that um, contribute to cancer? 100%. Really? Lifestyle. I did not know that. Yeah. So lifestyle, obesity, um, sleep, stress, um, environmental issues, these are all things that, that are... Um, that are associated with, uh, with cancer. Right, yeah. right, wow. And um, as far as, because it just boggles the mind that, you know, you're, you know, people who become firefighters is usually something that, it's like a dream mm -hmm. for, for, for people. Is that your case? Is that something that you, that you, that you kind of like saw as like a goal in your life that you wanted to serve the community? Or was it something you fell into? So, when I was in my early 20s, um, it was pretty much around the time where I decided to become a firefighter. You know, uh -huh. so I ended up going to Miami Dade um, Homestead Campus. Actually, they had just started their EMT program, so that's why I started back in two thousand one. Um, so yeah, like during that time, I was like, man, this is what I want to do. This is my goal. So I put all my eggs into that basket. Right. You know, um, my family was like, hey, why are you doing that? You have a family business right here. Mm. You know, like what are you doing, wasting your time with that? Mm. I go, no, I had to find my own way. Sure. And this was my my path. Right. You know. Well, yeah, I, you know, uh, I, I ask that because it, it seems like, you know, your dream, you know, your dream job uh, and, and, you know, a, a person that's out here helping the community and then all of a sudden what you're wearing and how you're doing your job, the things that imply, you know, obviously your, your job description um, puts you in, in, into the line of fire, so to say, you know what I'm saying? Um, no pun intended. It's like, yeah, no, uh, like... You know you, you, what you're telling me about the gear and everything like that. It just is the does does the fire department are they is there healthcare like is that is that something that's helping you out there? Because I mean it's not cheap to to, to you know it's definitely not cheap dude. to be able to go through everything. Yeah. So so um, so here's here's so luckily we have we have the firefighter cancer bill that came out I think in 2018 or so. Okay. Which um, not all states have by the way. So. So this legislation came out, like I said, in 2018 in Florida, and um, it for for firefighters who are diagnosed with cancer, 
you have to go through like a, like a checklist pretty much. Okay. You have to be in the job for five years. Um, if you have a second job, that second job cannot be, um, cannot have contributed to it. So it's like pretty much like a low risk, you know, like a low, like a low risk uh, second job, like an office job kind of thing saying. or whatever. Um, and there's a few other things, a few other boxes that need to be checked off. Oh, you have to, yeah. So a few other boxes have to be checked off. Um, and luckily, Florida is one of those. So I do call, I do fall under under that. Oh, what a blessing! I, very what yeah, a blessing! Yeah, yeah, very yeah, lucky, yeah, very lucky. But here's here's the thing. It's it's not. It, it, so that so this list here in Florida only has 21 cancers. Okay. Okay. And there's a lot of cancers like myeloma, or like my other cancer, I have lymphoma, mantle cell lymphoma. Um, you which, develop two types of cancer. Two different types. That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Um, and extremely rare. The, the, man, the mantle cell one is only like 4,000 diagnoses per year. Wow. And people that have both, literally is, I think there's only been like a, less than a dozen cases. So doctors like don't even know what to do with me. <laughs> but wow. aside from that, like, wow. you know, like, so, so both of those cancers are blood cancers, right? But I have a friend of mine that he actually just went through a stem cell transplant, a bunch of stuff. He's a firefighter also. He has a blood cancer, but it's not covered which doesn't really make sense to me. I think there's gonna be some legislation hopefully coming here soon that's gonna change the law that we have. Okay. Um, is so there any reasoning on that? Like why they're to select some of them and there are other? Like it's... From what I, I you know, I, I don't wanna speak out of school so I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. But I think some of those cancers that's on there is just the ones that they've been able to, to associate with the carcinogens. Okay. okay. You know, so I don't think they've gone through the whole list of cancers, you know? Because, yeah. I mean, uh, something like that would seem like a lot of these, uh, a lot of these uh, uh, legislations are sometimes written by the healthcare industry, you know what I mean? So it wouldn't be, it w it w I wouldn't find it any, uh, you know, anything strange yeah, that, yeah, no, that, that, you know, Sometimes these things are covered because at the end of the day, these companies don't want to pay out. And yeah. I, I would guess that that has to have some kind of influence because, you know, healthcare is, is profit based in this country. 100%. You know what I'm saying? You know, David, to be honest with you, to listen to you and just to hear you just speak and the way that you came in today to the, to the studio, you know, you, you have like this, like, go luckiness about you, dude. You, you have like this, like, like super contagious good vibe about you. Let me tell you, bro. There's people that like you meet them and then like you you immediately either feel good vibe or bad vibe. Oh, yeah. There's people that are hard to, to read like fake like sphinx, right? But uh, um, I would say you are one of those people. Thank and you. no no doubt, man. And and one of the things that you do, which is uh, you know you you you're a, you're a fit you stay fit. And you're helping people that are going through cancer as well to stay fit. Is that, am I correct? Yeah. So, so for the last couple, I want to say the last few months or so, uh -huh. um, I've been approached. I, I've actually been approached several times over the last couple of years. <clears throat> Excuse me. But to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not much of a speaker. Like, I have okay. a. I had a severe fear of public speaking. I mean, you're doing pretty good right now. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's I'm, because you're Cuban, right? I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you with you, right? <laughs> yeah. hey, but, but seriously, dude, like, I had a severe panic of public speaking. Really? Yeah, dude. Like, I was like, no, there's no way I'm doing it. But for some reason, the last few months, man, I felt like, you know, I actually started seeing a therapist. Okay. And she's like... Dude, like I think you're made for this. Like, you've been have you've Bro. been getting these opportunities thrown at you time and time and time again. And she's like, I think this might be something that's gonna like it needs it's gonna help you and help other yeah. people. For sure, for sure. But I was like, you know what? Alright, screw it. I'm putting my pride away, I'm putting everything away, I'm just gonna march forward, put my head down and and dale palante. You know, palante nice. palante. Nice. Um so yeah, so so the last couple of months, man, they um, you know a couple of fire departments and and some people from my job, they've been asking me to to speak to the new recruits, okay, and um, tell them you know the the, the, the you know the um, the risks of of the job and what to do, what not to do on on scene, you know that kind of stuff, and also telling them, explaining to them that health and fitness and you know having the right mindset and meditation and all that kind of stuff, it's on a use are huge factors 
on my health right now. Right. This is stuff that I've been doing for the last three and a half years since my diagnosis. And dude, I'm a different person. I'm completely a completely different person than I was, you know, four years ago. Wow. Yeah, man. I felt like I needed to 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 you know, if what I was doing wasn't working, you know, if right. what I was doing at the time got me sick, I, 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 get what you're, I need to throw all that stuff away and start saying. from scratch. Yeah, you know? So that's pretty much what I did. I reinvented myself and pretty much what I do is I tell these 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 kids and these even my, my, my colleagues at work, you know, I had a class a whole weeks ago that, that I went to to speak to them um, at, at, at the job with Firefighter Cancer Initiative. Yeah. And we just started talking about that same stuff, you know, the mindset, meditation, how many times I do it, exercise, seven days a week, nonstop, no matter what, you know, no matter what. I'm not saying go out and put in a two-hour workout every time. Right, right, right. Just do something, dude. Yeah. Do something, get your heart rate up for a few minutes, and then go home and chill, you know, do your thing. Go go play with your kids, go, go do something active, create, you know, get some sweat going. Um, another thing is diet, man. I changed my diet completely, completely, completely. You know, I tell people that, that I went from eating deli meats, you know, like like Pao and, and, and Latka, you know, stuff like yeah. that. And I'm like, no, no, no. So I cut all that stuff out. I was eating three pounds of that stuff a day. Wow. Because I was all about just protein and getting big and all this stuff okay, forever. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, you know, so that was like my, my go-to diet. Drinking egg whites out of the carton first thing in the morning shit. before yeah. to now. Like, honestly. Yeah, all that extreme health shit, huh? Bro, horrible. I wow. mean, for, for me. Right, right, right. Everyone is different. I think for me, it was like the straw that broke the camel's back. You know, it was, it was part of like, remember I told you all the different things that play into getting diagnosed with cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was just one more factor into it, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so diet-wise now, like, you know, I, I focus mainly on like plant-based, but I do have, you know, fish like maybe four times a week, five times a week. Um, That's awesome. I lower my protein intake and, and people are like, oh, you know, if you don't have protein, you're not going to build muscle. To be honest, I'm over that. You know, to me, my health and, and my goal to survive and live surpasses any of that stuff. Awesome. You know, awesome. Um, another thing is uh, sauna use. Saunas? Dude, like sauna get, use. Getting the, 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 the sweat out. Getting all the sweat out. Yeah. Like, 100%. 100%. Um, so I've been using the sauna for the last three and a half years. And I really think it's like one of my top, like one of my top three or four things that I've been doing that's like helped me where I am now. I look, I look healthy and I look normal, right? Yeah, yeah. My kids still don't even know that I have cancer, by the way. No way. No. Nah. So I have a, a 10 wow. and a 7 year old. Wow. And they don't even know. When I was going through my, my chemos and I'd come home, I'd give, my, I'd give myself that day to recover and maybe half of the next day. But when they come back from school, my son was like, oh, hey, Papi, let's go play. Let's go play soccer. Let's go play football. I'm like, all right, let's go. You know, wow. and I go out there and do do what I need to do because at the end of the day, it's not his fault. No, 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 for sure. For it's sure. not his fault, and and God forbid, knock on wood, if something were to happen to me, I, the only thing that he's gonna think of, though, my dad didn't want to yeah. play with me, he didn't love me, you know, right. that kind of stuff. So, <clears throat> yeah, so that's always that's always on, on like the forefront of my mind, you know. Um, let's uh, let's let's make a little pause right there. Let's put a pin in that, and we'll come back and we'll talk about that. We're gonna take a little musical break. But uh, I'm here with uh, Daniel Perez. David Perez. It's not your fault. It's his fault. He always changes the name. I always change the name. You call me Daniel. so famous for that. It's okay. David yeah, Perez, Tala Casa, Tiny Hero Foundation, Get Fit with Cancer, uh, a true hero out this motherfucker. Uh, El Bad Guy Show, The Great Affair Latino, The Great Affair Representando, Dean Raga. Yeah. Oh, thank you to Costa Rica. Oh, yeah. Big shout out to Costa Rica. Eh, ellos nos retransmiten todos los jueves de 8 a 10 por allá, 1402 FM Radio .com. Muchas gracias, los queremos mucho. Este, RCL Internacional, muchas gracias. Vámonos con musiquita, mi amor. <coughs> yes, sir, yes, sir. Ya se sabe lo que es. WKMTDB, The Great FM. Yes, sir, se sabe lo que es. El Bad Guy Show. Big Raga, y Sean El Villano. And uh, we got David Pérez en la casa. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yo, and uh, man. Yo, just quite a story, man. You have quite a life story. We were talking a little bit about um, how beneficial the sauna has been for you. Is that like, is that like a treatment like they that they sent to you, or was that something that you just came up with on your own? Just doing it on my own. Man. Yeah, yeah. That's something that that I ended up deciding to do after seeing my doctor for the first time. Was I had to take things upon myself to do the things that I want to do, things that I feel I need to do as a person, like for myself mentally, yeah. and 
So like that's what I'm saying. The doctor told me, don't work out. You can't work out because for myeloma, um, for example, it um, calcium gets leached from our bones. Mm -hmm. So we ha we can have the potential of having very very brutal bones. Wow. And let's say if I do squats or something, my spine can collapse. Wow. It's crazy, dude. It's wow. crazy. But. What are you getting like cardio type stuff? Well, I do everything. I, I, I weight train. Oh, okay. I haven't stopped weight training. Okay. Um, but, you know, he told me diet doesn't matter. He goes, don't do anything different. But I, I had to do everything different, you know. Um, so, like I said, I have to do everything with moderation, with cautiously, you know, do things smart, not just a uh, local, oh, I'm going to do, you know, bench 315 and right. squat, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I have to change everything. Um, but no, the sauna, for example, um, it we know, we know, that uh, using the sauna does eliminate certain heavy metals from our body, okay. right? And this is something that, that I started researching a few years ago, right? And, um, and not only that, the carcinogens and the metals, but my mindset. I would do a lot of meditation and stuff in there. And honestly, man, dude, it was a game changer. Really? A game changer for me, dude. But fast forward, you know, so like I honestly, a few months ago, um, there's a, a, a company from Canada started to contact me. Uh, Pure Spire. Okay. This is a startup company. Um, I ended up meeting with the other co-founders, and and it turns out that we're st we're this is not set in stone yet. We're still looking. We had to do the research on this, right? But the toxicologist there, she 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 claims that um, sauna use may uh, the reason why I may be feeling so good is because it's eliminating a lot of the carcinogens. Wow. That I've already have been taking in. A lot of those carcinogens. And metals, they, they sit in either fat, they sit in our, they store in our bones, they can store in our organs, wow. they can store in certain places where there's no way to, to take them out. Okay. You know? Yeah. Um, and she said that a lot of times using a sauna, excreting those toxins may actually um, help eliminate some of those things that, that are being stored in our system. Wow, that's incredible. Which I'm like, uh, no wonder. And she's like, and you do feel better since you've been doing the sauna. Dude, 100%, man. Wow. It's honestly, it's like I said, it's one of my top three things. Like I have to do, like everything that I do, it has to be all, all or nothing. Yeah. You know, it's the diet, it's the exercise, it's the sauna, it's the meditation, it's all of it. But the sauna, for me, has been one of the things where I feel like it's been like like the number like higher on the priority list for me. Okay. You know. So yeah, man, it's it's uh. And um, with the uh, you know, you mentioned off air that you know you were what you do with the the Tiny Hero Foundation and with the Get Fit with Cancer mm -hmm. is something that you're 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 trying to leave that for your kids in case something happens to you. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Tell me and, and tell me a little bit about that and what goes into the Tiny Hero Foundation itself. Okay. So um, so the, the Get Fit with Cancer, I'll start with that real quick. Pretty much that's like my homage to like my kids kind of thing, you know. Um, you know, I lost my dad when I was in my early 20s wow. and you know it was a sudden heart attack oh, sorry, massive yeah. thanks man um, but we didn't really we, we didn't really communicate we didn't really have a good a good a good, uh, good relationship <clears throat> I, I understand that <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey you know I did with, with the Spanish right? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so you know a year after I got diagnosed I was like you know what I need to do something to to leave something for my kids to understand what I'm going through okay you know because my kids still don't know that I even have cancer at this point. Um, so it's pretty much, you know, it's me speaking freely and, and seeing the stuff that I do, everything for them. And then I got, a couple years ago, about a year ago, I got a thought of doing uh, a not-for-profit, okay. okay? So I actually, the Tiny Hero Foundation was something I, I thought of about a year ago, and I literally just got approved for the for the, the status, the well, the five hundred one. I'm still waiting on the status from the IRS. Okay, but I, I filled up all the paperwork already. Um, uh, the application is already is already sent, and I'm okay. just waiting on the actual approval from from the IRS. But I got my EIN, I got everything, so I'm just waiting on that. But aside from that, um, so the Tiny Hero Foundation, what it is, in essence, it's a it's a way. Um, so if a firefighter, police officer, or military personnel die in the line of duty. Um, the Tiny Hero Foundation is going to create a scholarship in their name, in their child, in their children's name, in order for them to be able to afford to go to school, afford to, you know, have a higher education. That is dope. And also have a, a like a mental component, a mental health component. 
So for either therapy, therapy is available to therapy them or, or mental wow. or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. good. Because you know, that's really good. Yeah, man. I mean, look, like I said, I lost my dad when I was when I was young. Even though I was in my twenties, you know, you still need that. I never had that guidance growing up, so I feel like you know, uh, having something or someone that's gonna like help you, especially after you lose one of your parents, sure, sure. and it's gonna help you see the light and push you to, to do stuff and, and have that education component and the mental health component. I just thought like it was something that I needed, you know, and that I want my kids to have, God forbid, if something were to happen to me. Right, right. You know, um, just to release some of that, that, that stress that my wife will go through after I pass, or if I pass, knock on wood again. Um, yeah, <laughs> not hard. <laughs> And um, you know, just to ease that that burden for the for the family. Right, yeah. right. No, it's very it's very noble. Um, and you know, just that that thinking of ha thinking ahead, like uh, of of wanting to have that you know a support like a mentor or a therapy right there for the kids and or the spouse is, is something that uh, you know it's, it's it's such an important factor. You know. Mental health in this country, like I said, you know, before it was like since the healthcare system is, is you know for for profit, you know, unless you have the money, you can't get any uh, uh, mental health. Um, and the thing about it is that we all need it, some more than others. One hundred percent. And especially it's definitely underrated. No, yeah, it especially really and we and we're at a point in society where people are just at the edge. Of, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, wages are down, you know, there's poverty, there's a, uh, income inequality, you know, people are just struggling to pay their bills and, you know, having somebody to talk to goes a long way. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so definitely that's, the, that, that's, that's very dope. Um, right now, how does it, how does it work? You're receiving uh, donations for that? So right now, like I said, I haven't been able to get the, the 501 clearance yet, so I'm still waiting on that, so I can't even open a bank account. Oh, okay. Yet. But I think probably by this week that's coming up, oh, really? my, my, my so accountant, he's like, hey, you know, I called him last week, I was like, I need this thing working, man. He's like, yeah. oh, no, we sh you should get it by next week. Nice. So once I get that going, yeah, donations, um, you, can, you, you can go to tinyherofoundation.org, okay. um, or if you want for now, just follow me on, the, on Instagram, tinyherofoundation. Um, also, you can go to I have a I have a little bit of a little side side hustle there called Fire uh, Firehouse Flask. Okay. So that's firefightercancer.net is the website, and I do receive some donations there. Um, and I saw the I saw these tumblers, and actually I got one here for you. Oh, nice. Um, but uh, you know, and there you go. Oh, wow. Thank you. Sorry, I only brought one. I didn't know no, what I was going to walk into here. <laughs> <laughs> next time I come back. I just work here. Man. I got you. Next time I come back, I got you. I'll bring some for the whole crew. No, 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 Thank this you. Is oh, this is awesome. Thank man. you so much. Um, so, so you sell these in, in lieu of uh, uh, just, you know, putting all that towards the charity. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And how did you meet the, the bearded villain? Oh, bearded yeah. villains. Yeah. So, shout out to the bearded villains. Shout out to the bearded villains, man. Absolutely. So. Like I said earlier, Miami, small world. Right. You know, my, my boy, my boy V and Agustini, um, uh, and Gabe. They're part of the, the the villains. Yeah. So I met Agustini, man, decades ago. Shout out to Agustini. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, my boy V. That's a game too. Shit. Yeah. And Gabe, and then Gabe, I met back in probably 2000. Five or so? Oh yeah, so there's a magnet on it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's <laughs> actually great for the for the for the station here. You can put that little yeah. a little um, a little disc on there, and you're not gonna spill the uh, the tumbler over. Oh, nice. Um, it's the only magnetic tumbler ever. I, I, I came up with that. Um, but yeah, so I, I met I met those two guys years ago. Separate separate paths in my life. Um, and it's just what happens that they end up ended up being part of the villains. Right. So my boy B, he's like, you know, Agustini, he's like, hey, you know, we're I'm part of the villains. Why don't you, you know, come come swim by at an event we have going on? At this time was at was at Mike's at a Battle Axe Gym. Okay. And I ended up taking my son there, and I saw Gabe there. I was like, oh, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm the villain. You know, part of the villains. So it's just small world. Miami yeah. being Miami. I was, was there that day. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Okay, it is a small world. world. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I went to that event. Yeah. Awesome. Dude. Yeah, because I'm part of the villains. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, incorporating okay. myself. Oh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Okay. All right. That's all. No, they're great. Yeah. Great, great charity, man. 100%. Great people. You know, I yeah. just, I, 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 that's the reason I, I, I wanted to. Well, that's the reason I'm incorporating myself because I feel it's a, it's a great way to give back, man. We need to give back. Yeah. You know, one thing that I that I noticed, you know, being after being diagnosed, man, is is we are a community, whether we like it or not. You know, we have to work together. Because working individually, working by yourself, you're not going to get anywhere. Right, right, right. You're not right, going to get anywhere. You know, you're going to be hitting your head against the wall more often than not. You know, you know, working uh, in a team in a community to help help you move up and help someone who, someone else who has a certain weakness might be your strength. And you just by being you, you're bringing that person up. You know, it's you know? It, it's crazy that you even put it like that because American society in general is individualistic. You know what I'm saying? Very selfish. You know, and in Miami specifically, you have a huge aversion to socialism. You know what I'm saying? And and it's like, you know, a lot of people interpret that as like, just like... Communism. Communism or, you know, you, you can't, you know, you, you, you can't call it socialism if we're helping, you know, that's just this government thing taboo. But the truth is that like, if we, if we take all those names out of the, the, the equation and we just call it like helping each other out, <laughs> shit changes. And and you'll be and you'll be and, and you'll be surprised of how similar it is to those things that have those names. But all we have to do is just take out those th- those names and when you're talking about like being less individualistic and like you said, helping those that, that are falling through the cracks. Like that's something that unfortunately, yeah, like American society is not really keen to, to teach us. No, at all. You know, what but they teach us is you got to be out for self. You got to get you, 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 you. Those are people who've been screwed over by so many people, and they, they don't know how to let go and give and forgive. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But let me tell you, like I said, I started changing that after seeing a therapist. So that goes back to the mental health aspect. Yeah. You yeah. know, once once I, I started seeing my therapist, man, you know, and it's literally only been maybe five months or so, roughly. I don't know, time to me is like a blur now. Um, but, you know, the perspective that a therapist gives, well, which by the way, those who don't see a therapist for whatever reason, and those who are afraid of it, I was afraid of it, um, all they're giving you is perspective. Yeah. That's it. it, it they're shining on a light, a light on something that you just have tunnel vision for, and she's like, "Hey, did you, yeah. did you notice? Yeah. If you look through this side, yeah. it's, it's really, an outsider that is just right. looking that's, at the things in a that, different way, and it's asking you literally, valuable, like, but why? Why are you thinking this? What happened? Like, have you thought about this? Right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Dude. yeah. It's, and, it's and, easy. And, and you know what? And it's that. It, it's that kind of. Th- it has a name, the therapy, and right. then just the connotation of it is just. Uh, uh, uh. But when you take away the, the name of it and you just think of it as sitting down with somebody and getting another perspective, it, it changes. Yeah. You know what I mean? And to be honest with you, even if you were to go out somewhere right now and you're all up in your head and you bump into a person or you say go to a bar you, and you listen, you listen to another person give you advice... Sometimes it just opens your mind. <laughs> For sure. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And just, like yeah. you said, just having another person's point of view yeah. and accepting it as cr- constructive yeah. criticism. Right. Not you know, personal. Don't take not it personal. personal. Yeah. Right. Just if you're, if you're able to take that as a constructive criticism, you, your eyes open and, and, and you start seeing things different. Your life will change. You know? Yeah. And, and, and it's such a blessing that you are there because... You know, you do have to deal with a lot of things, and you know, and your ego has to deal with a lot of things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Going through what you're going through, yeah. and then you also have to take into account those who are around you, who you love, how it's going to affect them. So, dude, without a therapist, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. That, that's just it. Just seems tough. People really, you know, should look into that if yeah. they can. Dude, you know what I mean? This is something I like. I said, my wife had to like drill it into me. She's like, how? Be, like, she's been like, hey, it's been three years and you haven't seen anyone. I go, for what? I'm fine. Like, I'm just totally good. She's like, that's what you think. <laughs> you have so many things going on. You, you've gone yeah. through so much. Yeah. And you've never had a chance to, like, vent or talk. Because I, 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 I didn't talk yeah. to anybody. I, keep every, I kept everything to myself. Mm. Now, I got verbal diarrhea. I'm on, I'm on a radio <laughs> show talking about my <laughs> stuff, you know? No, man. Well, you, you know, what a blessing to have you here, really. Um, what do you... 
you know, I, I don't want to just come out and ask, just like, you know, but I guess I am. Ask what's the, um, what's the probability that, that, you know, you're, that you're going to succumb to, to your illness? Dude, the truth of the matter is, and this sounds grim, but we're all dying. Right. Yeah. We're all dying. Right. We are. The only difference is, I might, I may know what's gonna take me out. Right. Yeah. You right. know. So uh, I mean, so there's a good chance that I'm, I might not make it through the SC, that that stem cell uh, transplant wow. a few months. Wow. But everyone who knows me and even my doctors are like, dude, you'll be fine. Awesome. I'm, not, I'm not gonna say you have a zero percent chance of dying because right. there's no such thing. You know, right. you can't do that. But you're gonna be fine. Um, the only thing that I think eventually down the line, if I had to continue taking all these chemos, I'd probably get honestly like another cancer, and that's probably what's gonna do me in. Like honestly, I'm not even afraid of, of what I'm dealing with right now. I'm, I'm really not. Like I had that already, and I dealt with it, and I was, you know, I had my moments of fear and stuff like that. But I changed that fear 100, percent and I'm using it to drive myself forward with discipline, with like everything that I've been doing. Like that's what my fear has like driven me to do, right? You know, so honestly, I'm not, I'm not even afraid. I'm not even thinking about that. It's like, so part of the things, part of like the vision, like the meditation that I do is visualizing, right? And I, and literally, as cheesy as it sounds, man, I, I visualize myself as an 84 year old man. That's awesome. On my 85th birthday, yeah. my family's around me. We're cutting a cake for the old man. You know, I'm blowing the cake. Like I'm literally going through this stuff in my head. Like if I'm actually living it. Yeah. And and I, I have no time to to think about fear and and, and be afraid of it. Cause what, what is that gonna do to me? Good on you, brother. Good I mean, on you. you know, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, hundred like, percent. And that's the thing, dude. A lot of people who get diagnosed or have something going on, they get depressed, they lay in their bed, and that is how they end up succumbing to certain things. Depression. Remember, remember, I said in the beginning. Stress and all that stuff has to do with with the diagnosis, yeah, right? And yeah. it also has to do with with how long you're gonna, you know, um, you know, your chances of being able to to pull through, right? Right. So I think the mindset is such a huge factor that I, I don't see myself dying from this. You well, know, that, that that that's really dope. I applaud you. I mean, you know what, like. I, I'm such a I'm such a piece of shit and a pussy because I would I, I would definitely lay in my bed and just die like I, I don't bullshit know, I'm man such a piece of shit bro oh, yeah, oh, yeah, let me tell I you I swear to God I would I'm, be like that I'm telling you it's fight or flight man there's some people who fight flight and freeze yeah, yeah. you're probably not that guy dude you you don't know you don't know how you're gonna handle that situation right. nobody knows right. until they're in that situation yeah and one more quick thing um, placebo effect you know what placebo effect of course, is of course. Bro, placebo is real. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. why they have to do these double, double blind placebo yeah. tests. Because yeah. if someone thinks they're taking the right medication, right, it it, it changes everything. It changes yeah, yeah, everything. Yeah. Even the body reacts yeah. to that. Dude, yeah. that's yeah, how yeah, crazy yeah, yeah. the mind is. It is, man. It is, it is. So and and that's why I'm 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 not dying from this shit, dude. There's no way. There's no way. I have, you're placebo I have, affecting yourself through the whole thing. I'm through it. Hundred <laughs> percent. Dude, man, so much respect to you. Um, let, let, let everybody know again the websites where they can where, where they can you know find you and contribute and then all that. Yeah, for sure. So um, for, for Tiny Hero Foundation, Tiny Hero Foundation on Instagram, tinyherofoundation.org um, on the web, uh, firefightercancer.net for the tumblers and if you guys wanna wanna you know buy these tumblers or whatever. Um, also uh, get filled with cancer on Instagram uh, underscores. Also, I'll be doing, um, we're doing our first little charity. Okay. Uh, July 7th, um, it's gonna be in the Keys. We're gonna be paddling out from, from the Keys to a little island out oh, there. Wow. Yeah, so for that, nice. you can go to, <laughs> it's, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun. Uh, for that, you can go on my, on my. Um, let me see. You can go to Eventbrite, Eventbrite, and do a search for, for Kelly Day's uh, Paddle Out. Okay. And that's gonna come out there, or you can go to, to my social media and I have it posted all there. No, oh, no. Oh. Okay. We're um, gonna be sharing the links also. We're, yeah, we're gonna be sharing it. Yeah. So yeah. And, and tag the us in anything you do. Oh, so we'd love to help. If sweet. you ever need a host or you know some musical act, I'm, oh, you know, cool, I'm down to come down and and, and help you out. Thank you. Man. Uh, we're always here for you. Any events that you have, 
any other time you want to come up, come along over here, este es tu, este es tu casa, acá puedes venir a, a compartir lo que, lo que quieras con nosotros. Gracias, y esperamos, es, esperamos poder verte seguido, porque de verdad que lo que estás haciendo es like, support, you know, people, people need support, because everybody's right. going through something, like you said, right. you know. Thank you, David, for, 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 for coming with us uh, and, and sharing, you know, such a personal fucking thing, man. It's just, you know, you, you, you really have set your ego aside to sit down with us and, and, and tell us everything about you. You know, uh, man, I, I wish I had, like, uh, one of those applause things. That, <laughs> God damn, man. Real. Yeah, no. I, I, appreciate, you, I appreciate you guys a lot, man. Thank you. And next time I come back, I hope to come back. I'm gonna get another second tumbler, third tumbler for whoever else needs it in the. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I know he can play because I love tumblers. If you go to my house, I have all the colors all the time. So I know he's not gonna use. It's mine. <laughs> it wasn't Dora, but it. Don't worry about it. I'll come back and I'll, I'll drop another one. Yeah. 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 Uh, Thank you, David. David Perez, Tiny Hero Foundation, Get Fit with Cancer, and your other website. Um, <clears throat> tinyherofoundation.org or firefightercancer.net firefightercancer.net uh, thank you so much uh, WKMTDB connecting the world through music and through love yes that's good you know what I'm saying that's what we do out here El Bad Guy Show the Shana Villano the Raga you know how we do we're, we're gonna gracias Costa Rica thank you Costa Rica <laughs> we're gonna go into some music y volvemos en un ratito vamos allá estás escuchando The Bad Guy Show con the Shana Villano y yo Di raga, ya. Yeah.